we're glad to be sharing the ministry of Redemption Church with you. Now join us as we receive the Word of God. Welcome to everybody in the room, everybody online. I love all of you guys. Thank you for being a part of this body of Christ, all right? Absolutely. And thank you for your giving. I'm really excited about what the Lord's going to do with that, and we're going to tell the testimonies of it, right? Excellent, excellent. Welcome back to Redemption Church in Plano, Texas. My name is Chris Fluitt, and I'm here to preach the Word of God. Is anybody going to preach with me today? Did, yeah. Is that all right if y'all preach with me today? Now, what, I, what do I mean by preach with me? I mean, like, if we say something about Jesus, and you yeah. like that guy, right? And, and it's a good thing that's said about Jesus, right? That might be a place to go, oh, yeah, or a, a little bit of, amen, all right, yeah, preach. That's right. That's my Jesus he's talking about, right? All right. Cool. Excellent. You see, that is, that is cheering for a team that wins. That's what it used to be like to be a Cowboys fan. And it is no longer. All right. But greetings to everyone. He is worthy of praise. I am a Cowboys fan. I'm dissing on myself. We are in the third week of a sermon series called Unseen battle. In week one, we told you to identify the battle, and we gave you the scripture memory verse, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Let's look at it together. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. All right, so does that Bible verse tell us that we have a struggle. Yeah. All right, so all those people out there that actually preach in churches and tell you if you follow Jesus, you'll have no struggle. Nope, they miss this verse, right? And they said, oh, nope, if you got faith, you'll never have another problem again. They miss this verse. We do have struggle, yeah. but we have to identify our struggle. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood. We are not at war against people. But we are at war against what? Spiritual forces. We are in a spiritual war. I've been defining spiritual warfare as a conflict in the unseen angelic realm that is affecting the physical, visible realm. Right? Two realms are at war. One of them is angelic. It's unseen. It is spiritual. And it is affecting, we see the outcome of this war in the physical, visible realm. In week two, we, we talked about some of your spiritual weapons. Spiritual weapons, spiritual enemies require spiritual weapons, the armor of God, the blood of Jesus, prayer and fasting are some of the weapons we use in the struggle. If you have any questions about some of those things, check out last week's and get a hold of it. Uh, we also talked about the purpose of prayer and what it really means when prayers are not answered like we would want. I would suggest you grab a hold of that last part of that sermon. Many people need to hear that one right there. Today in week three, I want to talk to you about the location of the battle. Can you say location? location. There's three rules in real estate. One of them's location, the second one's location, and I forget the third one. Oh, it's location. Got it. Thank you. Y'all are very helpful. The location of the battle is a major tactical advantage in war. There are some terrains that favor foot soldiers and not tanks. Guess which one costs more? Tanks. But you can neutralize that great advantage of tanks if you fight in the right terrain. Uh, there are some positions that will provide cover from the eyes of snipers and the bullets that come with those snipers. Uh, the location of higher ground is an advantage every soldier tries to take, including Jedi. I thought there was going to be a picture, but there's no picture. It, that's a Star Wars reference, everyone. There it is. Great. Timing is everything in humor. Where is the location 
of this spiritual battle. If, if location is really important when it comes to the tactical value of, of a battle, where is the location of our spiritual battle? Is the location of the battle at the church building? Oh my gosh, Satan's really getting a hold of me. I got to get to the church. And you show up like at 2 a.m. on a Tuesday. Like, I'm here. <sighs> Devil almost had me. But I got here. Right? No. Is it the church sanctuary? Oh my gosh, the devil sniped me while I was still in the vestibule. He, in the narthex or the, 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 the welcome center, right? I was almost to the sanctuary. If I could have gotten to the sanctuary, then he wouldn't have been able to get me. Some religions suggest a pilgrimage be made to a holy land. If, you, if you're really going to be saved, you need to go on a vacation to a holy place. Is that the location of the battle? Is that we supposed to get on a boat and go overseas? Are we supposed to go walk, you know, the Via del Rosa where Jesus walked on the way to uh, the, the, the Calvary? Are, are we supposed to go, I don't know, to, to Jerusalem and, and see the sights there? Is that, is that where the battle is fought? Is that the location? What do you think? Everybody help me. No, very good. Y'all are smart people. Our battle is not with humans. Our struggle is with the invisible spiritual enemies. So where is the location of the battle? I want to tell you, we've already answered this question today. Do you know where it is? It's always in the word of God. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. One more time, let's look together. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Now, do you see locations anywhere in this scripture? Anybody see locations? Anybody see? How many locations do you see, actually? How many see? There's actually two. There's two. Everybody said two. 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 All right. All right. The first one is against the powers of this dark world 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 all right so so would that mean that we fight here on earth and you might you might think that but the greek word uh, for world is aeon it's the word where we get eon and it does not mean time it does not mean earth but instead means an age or a period of time sometimes it kind of means like a culture like a culture of time, like a time that we're living in. Man, these times, it's hard to get out there. That's the word it's using. These dark times, that's the word for world, all right? Man, the world these days, you're not really talking about the globe, right? You're talking about all the crazy stuff going on in the world today. All right, so it is where we get that English word of eon, and it is not a location, so it looked like a location, but it was a false flag. Everyone say false flag. So let's keep reading. Where's that second location? It's right at the end. And against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. All right. The enemy, those spiritual evil forces are where? They're in the heavenly realms. And this will challenge some of the things you think. This will challenge some of the things you think. We'll talk about that in a little bit. It, it might surprise us because it sure seems like the enemy's here on earth. Right? Yeah. Some of y'all are like, you cannot tell me the devil ain't here on this earth. He was in my kitchen this morning. He was there. <laughs> and I get that. I get that. I only slightly make light of that. That is, no, that's a, I get that why it feels that way. Some of you could swear that the enemy is at your office at work or in your fifth period class at school or, or even closer, he's in your family, he's in your marriage or he's in your mind and he's there gnawing away and I am not putting down any of that at all. For our struggle is against spiritual forces of evil but they are in heavenly realms. Your Bible actually speaks of Three heavens. I was talking to a pastor just the other day. He said, there's these people in the church that want to be really deep, like really deep. And they're like, pastor, 
please teach us all about the seven heavens. It's like, there's a song about seventh heaven, and there's a TV show called Seventh Heaven. But actually, that's uh, other religions believe in a seventh heaven. We as Christians, and we have a Bible that does not talk about seven heavens, but it mentions third heavens. Do you know those heavens? Number one is the sky. When they talk about this first heaven in your Bible, it is the sky. The Lord made uh, the heavens and the earth. Wait, is that a plural heavens? He made the heavens and the earth, right? You see that? There's one earth and there's multiple heavens. That's why it has an S at the end on heavens, all right? Uh, So the first one is the sky. When you look out at the sky, it, it is not incorrect. Go, look at the heavens. Isn't that beautiful? Look at the heavens there. Now, in an ancient mindset, uh, they would call that the first heaven. And then at night, when the sky was no longer blue, the ancient world go, went, I don't know why that happened, but look, it, all the, the sky rolled back and look at all those stars. And they, the ancient world actually believed that those were angels up there and believed that that was the second heaven. So the ancient world believes that stars and the outer space area is the second heaven. All right, this is well the ancient world thing. Now here's the third heaven, and this one's completely biblical. This one's totally on the money because Paul himself says, I knew a man. He doesn't tell us who the man is. Some people think it's Paul himself. Some people think it's John. Who knows who it is? I don't know who it is. You don't know who it is, so enough of that. But this man was taken up to the third heaven, to the third heaven, And it was so real, he didn't know if he was really there in his body or if it was a vision. This is in your Bible. And so it wasn't the first heaven that the ancient world thought was the sky. It wasn't the second heaven, which the ancient world thought was uh, outer space. It was another heaven. Let me tell you about another heaven is what uh, Paul is, is telling us here as he's speaking to an ancient world. All right. He's saying that he went where? To the very throne room of the Lord. The very throne room is this third heaven. So when we talk heavens in the Bible, it can mean more than one thing. Everybody with me say, yeah. Yeah. Good. I like it. All right. I want us to think about God's throne room because that's the heaven we all really want to get to. It would be cool to fly like a bird or to fly like Sally Ride on a rocket, but it would be more cool to be in God's throne room. That's where I want to be. I want you to think about the highest heaven. I want you to consider that this is where the real battle takes place. And if that's true, let me ask you this question. Is your attention on earth or in heavenly realms? And I think if we're all honest, we go, earth, right? But where's the battle fought? It's fought in heavenly realms. And if we're not careful, we've even as Christians put put people down because they were too heavenly minded for any earthly good, right? And that, that person's too heavenly minded for any earthly good. And we understand that. That's sometimes like super spirituality. They're more like a Pharisee. We get that. But I'm telling you, we are not heavenly minded enough. And being heavenly minded is earthly good. Paul's letter to the Ephesians constantly brings our attention back to the heavenly realms. We read one in in Ephesians 6, 12. Now let's go to the first chapter, Ephesians 1 and 3. If we could put that up on the screen. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. So, did anybody see a location? Yeah, heavenly realms are there. Who else is there? God, your Father. God the Father, God the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, but also God your Father, God the Father. You can call Him that. God the Father, or I like to say God my Father. I claim Him. He is mine. God is in a heavenly place. But that's not all that's there. Your spiritual blessings 
that are in Christ are where? In heavenly realms. So who's there? God Almighty. What's there? Your spiritual blessings. All right. Do you think you need God to win in this unseen battle? Oh, y'all are smart people. I like that. So where is God again? He is seated in these heavenly realms. Now listen, God is omnipresent. But there is a place where his throne is. And you are told in your Bible that you can go boldly before his throne of grace. And so you should have bold access to the throne of God. Right? So God is in the heavenly realm. Do you think we need to, to maybe get to the heavenly realm sometime? All right? Continue on that. Do you think you need your spiritual blessings? Do you think that those would be useful in this unseen battle? Do you think that God has spiritual blessings for you that might be useful against an enemy that wants to destroy you? Yes, absolutely. So what, I want to hear you tell me, where are your spiritual blessings? They are in heavenly realms. So listen up, earthlings. There is a higher place, and we must lift up our eyes past a physical and, a, and, and look to a spiritual place. And this is not some weird doctrine. This is straight in Scripture, that there is a heavenly place. And we want to be there one day, right? In fact, the Lord tells us in his word that we are already citizens of that place. All right. It, it continues, Ephesians chapter 1, and we'll read a few verses here. Verse 18, I pray the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparable great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated at the right hand in the heavenly realms. All right. Verse 21. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, the present eon, the present world, but also in the world to come, the one to come. There is an age to come, and it doesn't matter what age you're in, Christ is seated on the throne in heavenly realms, and he is above all rule, all dominion, all authority, above everything that has a name. How good is the name of Jesus? Well, if you can find anything that's got a name, go ahead and tell me what that name is. Jesus' name is better. His name is not just above. What does it say? Far above. It's not just a little bit. Oh, uh, just, oh, he just, Jesus just edged out Buddha by that much. No, Jesus is far above. He's far above. Hmm. And he is where? In heavenly realms. Do you think a resurrected Christ who is far above all rule, authority, power, and dominion in every name is perhaps needed in this unseen battle, this spiritual warfare? Do you think he is somewhat needed in your battle? The answer is yes on that. If you don't know that, we need to have a Bible study. And Christ, it tells us, Paul is saying these things over and over in the book of Ephesians. He is trying to take that church in Ephesus and focus them off of earthly things where fights are, where, where gossip is, where unforgiveness is, where pettiness is where materialism is and focus it church on things that are above i'm telling you when you th listen guys when you think of the word gossip your mind goes to two places junior high and church That's right. That's true. 
Three people really like that. Listen, we, we have got, that is the, the church looking at earthly things. That is the disciples going, hey, Jesus, let us sit on your right hand and your left hand. We'll just start ruling the earth right here. It'll be so good. In fact, there's some people over there. Would you like us to call down fire on them? Will you allow us to do that? That's in your Bible. Those are disciples. Those are inner circle disciples, James and John I'm talking about. <laughs> they're, they're off their rocker, but so are we in the church. You know why? Because the church is focused on the wrong location. And our battle is not on heaven. in heavenly places. We are now struggling against flesh and blood. And Paul told us clearly, that's not where your struggle is. That's what he told us. So listen, let me break this down to you. God is in heavenly realms. Every spiritual blessing is in heavenly realms. A resurrected Jesus with all that power is in heavenly realms. And you might be thinking, well, good job, preacher. Great, you put all that together. But I'm here on earth. I'm living in an apartment I don't like. I'm going to a job I don't like. My kids don't like me. And this is all I'm going through. So, you know, what good does this teaching about heavenly realms do for me? All right, I got you. Actually, your brother Paul has got you. Word up, Paul. Good job. Because Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, he's got this for you. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Oh, I see you, Paul. That is slick. Raised with Christ. Seated with Christ. Is Jesus, is Jesus seated like on, like at, you know, where the kids' table is at Thanksgiving? You know, the kids' table. Who's ever been at the kids' table? No. Right? You think Jesus is seated there? Is Jesus seated in some little high chair? Did they bring out a folding chair that's creaky and it bends to the side when you sit in it? Is that the one he... Tell me, somebody, what chair he's seated in. The throne. the throne. And if he's in the throne and you're seated with him in his chair, where are you? No, wait. Did you have pause to say that? Or did you feel like, oh, I don't, I probably shouldn't say that. The Bible says it very clearly. You need to grab a hold of the promise. If Jesus is in the throne, he says, you're in the throne with me. You come right on, there's room, come sit in the big chair with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Ha, what good does it do for me to be hearing this teaching on heavenly realms? Well, because you're supposed to be there. You're supposed to be in those heavenly realms with Jesus Christ, with the Father, and with every spiritual blessing you're supposed to be there. If you think this is about the rapture where believers are caught up to heaven, think again. That is going to happen, but this that we just read is written in the past tense. God raised, past tense, us up with Christ who was already resurrected and see Tid, past tense, us with him in the heavenly realm. This is past tense. He's already done that. I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to the trumpet to sound, but that's not all. That, that we're not waiting for heaven in, in every way. We're going to be caught up to heaven, but we have the authority of heaven now we have access to God in heaven. Now we have every spiritual blessing of heaven. Now, well, let's just go there. Do you think that that the blessings of heaven are somehow cheap? Do you think that somehow the blessings of heaven are just like dollar bin toys at you know the Dollar Tree? No. These are powerful, spiritual blessings, and they're in heaven, and you are to be seated there now. When God raised up Christ, he raised up all those that have faith in Christ. 
One day your physical body will be raised. But right now, your born again self, your spiritual dude is raised. Your spiritual dudette is raised with him, not waiting for a trumpet, but now. Now. Mm. When God raised up Christ, it gave you access to your own resurrection. Romans chapter 6, verse 4. We'll jump out of Ephesians for a second. We'll go to what Paul said in Romans chapter 6, verse 4. When we were therefore buried with him, you, that means dead, right? Buried, yeah. Buried with him through baptism. You know that? That, that, that baptism in the water, that going down in the water is, is also like you going down into a death and being buried. Repentance was your death. You died to sin, and now the symbolism is that you are buried with him, all right? In order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, the resurrection, we too may live a new life. So right here, you can have your own personal death, burial, and resurrection. Repentance is the death. Baptism is the burial. And his spirit living in you is... The resurrection. We have been given a new spiritual life and given authority and access to a new spiritual location. Heavenly realms. Seated with Christ on his throne in these heavenly realms. You are doing too much fighting on earth. Who would agree with that? Raise your hand if you agree with that. I agree with that. I agree with that. We are doing way too much fighting here on earth. The battle is in heavenly realms. You do too much arguing with your mouth and and texting. Somebody raise your hand if you agree. Not as many agreed with that. I'm going to ask the people you've been texting. That's true. Right? The battle's not over the Sprint mobile carrier's data system. No, the battle is in heavenly realms. You struggle too much with your habits and your disciplines here on earth. The battle of those things you think are physical are actually spiritual in nature, and they are to be fought at a higher location in heavenly realms. Where is your battle being fought? Is your focus only on the things of earth. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Christians that's you. Set your hearts on things above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above. Not on earthly things. Oh my goodness. Our minds. Our hearts are supposed to be up there. Set your mind. If you let your mind wander around by default, you will always focus on earthly things. If you let your heart just wander and meander wherever it goes, it will always settle on earthly things. That's why it says you have to set your mind. You have to set your heart. Anybody use their their phone or a clock to help them wake up? Yeah. Yeah. Does that do much good if you didn't set the alarm? No. You just wake up any old time, right? No. You have to set the alarm and then it focuses you at the right time. But you and I have to set not a clock but our heart and set our mind. I'm going to tell you something. I believe this. God has put situations in front of you to be a witness and to do powerful things for him. Some of you have been going, God, why can't I do amazing things? And God's like, "Uh, they're right here. Why don't you do that? There's this person right here in need. There's this person right here who obviously needs prayer. There's this person who said a thing, and I brought a scripture right into your mind and into your heart, and you did nothing with it. What's going on? Here's what's going on. You have not set your heart, and you have not set your mind. And so you've looked right past the earthly things and not saw the spiritual things. 
In order to see the spiritual opportunities, you have to set your heart, set your mind. Matthew 6 and 10, Jesus says this in a prayer. You might have heard it. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do you want God's kingdom to come to earth? Do you want his will to be done on earth? Oh, my goodness. In order to do that, you have to look up to the Father and say, Hallowed be your name. You have to be looking up there in order for his kingdom to come. I worry, I worry about Christians who think they're just going to make the kingdom happen here by voting a certain way or protesting a certain way or, oh, I'm going to say a stinging thing with those, about those I agree with on Facebook and that's going to make the kingdom of God come to earth. I'm telling you, that makes me very angry. Because that's not how the kingdom comes. That's not how his will is done. It doesn't start on earth. It starts in heaven and it comes to earth. There are actually Christians out there that do not believe in a rapture. They do not believe in a rapture and they they really don't believe in a kingdom age. They believe that God's waiting on us to build the kingdom and make the kingdom happen. And then once we've made the kingdom happen, Jesus is going to show up and go, finally, guys, y'all prepared it for me. That's not what I read in the word of God. If we are waiting on anybody, it is the Lord who said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. News for you, we're not preparing the kingdom for him. He's preparing the kingdom for us. Somebody preach with me. Ah. My goodness, thank you, Lord. Set your mind and set your heart. Father, we look up to your heavenly throne. That's where you are. That's where your kingdom is. That's where your will is done. Let your kingdom and let your will come to earth. Let your kingdom and your will come to my home. Let your kingdom And let your will come to my place of work. Come, come kingdom of God. Come will of God. Do you think anybody's sick in heaven? It is not God's will or kingdom to have people sick or in pain. Let that same will come to earth and heal people. You need to pray that way when you're praying for healing. You are not talking God into doing something that's not his will. It is always his will to heal. It is always his will to heal, and he will heal one way or another. He will either heal right now in the physical, or he can heal by taking those people to heaven. But let me tell you, they're both healing, and don't you doubt it. No one is depressed, addicted, impoverished, hateful, deceived in heaven. Why? Because, Lord, it's not your will. For any of those things to go on in heaven. Let that same will, let that same kingdom come to earth in Jesus' name. You know what a kingdom is? A kingdom is a king's domain. King, domain, kingdom. Anytime you hear Jesus talking about the kingdom, he's literally talking about the king's domain. Kingdom. Heaven. Is our king's domain, absolutely. And it is our job on earth to make our home the king's domain. Our school, wherever we have our influence, our workplace, make it the king's domain. Our family and our marriage, we need to make it the king's domain. Our city, our country, our world. And we don't do that in the physical. We do that in the heavenly realms. We do that in spiritual ways. Your kingdom come to earth, Lord. The unseen battle is in heavenly realms, and it affects earth. And that's what you see when you see all this destruction on earth. You think, oh man, there's a demon over there. That's where he is. That's got to be where the demon's working, right? Afghanistan, all this stuff over there. Look, there's a, there's a tidal wave over there. There's a tsunami. 
there's a, a tropical storm, there's a hurricane. We see these things. We see people shooting each other. We go, there it is. And so we point to our earthly location. But we are spiritual people of a spiritual kingdom. And we care about the earth, but we know how to help the earth is not found on earth. It's found in heaven. Where Christ is, he is seated there. Where the Father is, where every spiritual blessing is, and where you are supposed to be an authority already in that kingdom. It's all in those heavenly realms. The unseen battle in heavenly realms, it affects the earth. So when we join the unseen battle in heavenly realms, it will affect the earth. Your spiritual warfare can bring heaven down to earth. His kingdom comes down to earth. His will be done to earth. When we read in the book of Revelation, this is one of those things, it plays with people's minds. I'm sorry, as a pastor, I just kind of want to play with your brain for a second. Let me. Where's heaven? Where's heaven? Point to heaven, the direction of heaven. Point to the direction of heaven. All right. Now, do you know this in your Bible, that, that John the Revelator is looking and an angel sowing him the temple of God God's throne room, God's heaven comes down. And where does it sit? On earth. Sometimes we think that heaven's this place up there and that's where heaven is. It's a bunch of clouds and there's funny baby looking angels there, right? That's the world's pictures of, of, of heaven. No, heaven The heaven where you will spend eternity with the Lord is right here. Because earth is not a throwaway. He is going to bring his kingdom here. He is going to bring his will right here. God loves the earth so much, he's coming to it. He sent a savior to it. That savior's coming back to it. You can't find a place in your Bible that shows us that Jesus returns to earth and never leaves. And finally, his throne room, the very throne room of God, is coming to earth. That is how much heaven should affect earth. My God. You know what miracles are? Heaven coming to earth. Do you know what answered prayers are? That's his will coming to earth. Do you know what salvation is? It's the will of God coming to earth. His kingdom being born in someone on earth. This is what really is happening when a drug addict gets delivered. Sometimes we think so too earthly. People were like, well, we were at church and people were just really excited. And and the preacher was just a little more excited. And it, it was just excited enough to make a guy say, okay, I think I believe in that. No. It's so cool that we're excited. (laughs) That's so good. But what did it was a kingdom that can't be seen and a will of a king in that kingdom that can't be seen. And it came down and it found its way into a drug addict's heart. And that's how they're set free. And, and sometimes we Christians will argue over stuff. It's like, well, I don't know if God can do that anymore. I don't know if God can do those miracles anymore. And like, God's always doing those miracles. You just got to pray hard enough. And we're like in these little things. No, it, both guys settled down. <laughs> it's about his kingdom. Yeah. And when his kingdom comes, everything's better. Yeah. And when his kingdom comes, every demon loses. When his kingdom comes, everybody is filled with joy. Yeah. When his kingdom comes, what Jesus died for takes place thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven oh your kingdom come to earth oh you ought to change the way you worship a little bit say oh jesus i'm just starting i'm starting a little early on welcoming you down to the king your kingdom down here i'm just starting a little early welcoming your will right here god In Jesus' name. I'm going to go ahead and be joyful because there's joy in your kingdom. There's peace in your kingdom. So I'm going to walk in that.
that peace. And, and your name is exalted above every name in your kingdom. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right here on earth. That's going to change the way you pray. That's going to change the way you worship. That's going to change the way you get up in the morning and the way you go to sleep at night. The unseen battle in heavenly realms really does affect the earth. Both negative and positive, that is true. So we are so focused on what gets done on earth that we forget it came from heaven. Christians, we do that. We do that on the positive and the negative. So remember, everything that's happening on earth has its start in heavenly realms. Okay, you got it. The Father is in heavenly realm. Your blessings are there. Your Savior is there. You are meant to sit sit there with the Savior in his throne, in heavenly realms. So guess what? Your prayers need to touch heaven. You realize that we're not just going through the motions with prayer. Oh, Lord, now I say my memorized prayer to you that I've said many times. And I've waited, now I've finished, and now I'm going to wait three seconds. I'm going to very much piously get up, bow my head, and walk. Do you think that touched heaven? No, we need to touch heaven in the way we pray. Now, we could talk, there's some things we could talk about passionately praying, or fervently believing. Or declaring the word of God. But here's the thing. It's a battle. Right? It's a struggle. <laughs> so what? it's not time for now I lay me down to sleep type prayer. We are trying to reach heavenly places. I might be ruining a future sermon. But here it is. There is a place in Daniel chapter 10. Where Daniel has prayed for an answer. I'm about to blow someone's mind. Y'all listen. Daniel has prayed for an answer. And it's day one. It's day two. It's day three. It's day four. It is now day 21. And finally, the answer comes. And it's an angel. And he's like, hey. So here's the deal. Isn't it funny that an angel's explaining himself to, to Daniel? He said, hey. I guess the angel, I just imagine the angel's out of breath. Just imagine with me. It's like, you will not believe the, the, the day I've had. Like, kind of like, and he, the, this angel, it's 21. This is in your Bible. I'm not making it up. I'm having fun with it, but I'm not making it up. The angel comes to him and tells him something he doesn't know. Here's what he says. The day you asked, the father heard in heaven, and he put the message in my hands and sent me. That was day one. But as I was coming to earth, there was a battle in a heavenly realm, and there was someone, a spiritual entity called the Prince of Persia. And it was a demonic angel, a demon, that met the other angel with the message, and they fought, and they were at a stalemate for 21 days until God sent another angel named Michael, who is an archangel, and Michael helped him overcome that enemy, and finally the angel is able to come with the message, and Daniel receives the message, and that's why we have most of our understanding of end-time prophecy, because that message finally got there. What was going on there? I'll tell you what's going on there. God hears the prayer. Your prayer reaches heavenly places, but guess what? Sometimes there are forces keeping knowledge from earth. There are forces that could keep healing from earth. I, I'm, I'm imagining, y'all prove me wrong if I'm wrong, but right here there are forces both going into heaven and out of heaven. So can I tell you this? Are you praying strong enough? Faith-filled enough to pray through to heaven. Talk about worship. Is your worship, does it just fall flat two feet from you? Or is it powerful enough 
to get up to the very throne room of God and knock some angels out of the way. Knock some demons out of the way. I'm telling you, your prayer and your worship, your spiritual weapons need to push angels out of the way. Do you even think that way when you're praying? That's in your Bible, y'all. That's Daniel 10. I invite you to read it. I invite you to look all over it. You are meant to do battle in heaven and see the result on earth. Our prayer sometimes doesn't leave the room. They need to be stronger. They need to be more committed. Our spiritual dedication sometimes doesn't live past Sunday. We want to reach heaven. How about we have a dedication that goes a little further? Our faith ought to reach the very throne room of God. God ought to be looking down and say stuff like, whoa, look at Job. Look at that guy. Look at Sarah Gell over there. Look at Scott. Look at Omar over there. Look at those, those people with that faith. That, uh, he, ought to, he ought to be busting at the seams looking at his children, seeing their faith, Deborah, seeing it. We can spend an entire day sometimes without ever talking to God. Now, I know that stung a little bit because it was so true. But you can wake up in the morning. The Bible says he's given you new mercy every day. He has blessed you with, with everything in front of you. you none, none of y'all are living on the streets. and Every one of y'all have a, a food to eat. Most of you have cars and a place to drive to and, and get paid. And you have all of these things and you come home and you've got all the comfort. You, you're, you complain because you're like, there is nothing on Netflix, Hulu, Discovery Plus, Disney Plus, I mean, you, you, YouTube, you're all over the place. You've got like, you're like, oh my gosh, is there nothing on? That's your life. And you can live that entire day, 24 hours, and never have talked to a God that's in heavenly places. Oh, we got to look past earth. We got to look past earth. Earth is important. You bet it is. The gospel preaches that so loudly. Somebody say it loudly with me. For God so loved the world. Earth is important. It's so important he gave his only begotten son. It's why Jesus came to earth. Earth is important. Heaven is important. The gospel preaches that loudly as well. Jesus ascended where? Into heaven. And he promised that where he is, we shall be also. If we really care about heaven, we're going to focus our life on earth. Our life that we live on earth is going to be focused. It's not just going to be this mirandering mess. If we care about heaven, we're going to focus our life on earth towards God's will and his kingdom. And if we really care about earth, we will focus our spiritual life on heaven and towards God's will and kingdom to be done on earth. So let's do that. That's a battle. Does that sound like a battle? Let's do battle today. What on earth do you care about? Think about that. What on earth do you care about? What on earth are you worried about? What on earth are you concerned about in your own life, in the life of someone else? What is it? The answer is in heavenly places. The Lord's told you that tonight. The answer is in where he sees. That's where the answer is. God, we are people on earth. Help us to reach out to you in heavenly places. Hear our cry tonight. You said we are seated with Christ. Help us to bring your kingdom to earth. Lord, let the miracle that we so desperately need, let it come to earth. Lord, let the answer let it come from heaven. Lord, don't let it be held up by any spiritual forces. Let it come right to us tonight in Jesus' name we pray. Who's ready to reach out to the Lord? Who's ready for, to, to lift up some prayer that goes past this room and touches heavenly places? Why don't you come on right now in Jesus' name? Let's begin to talk to the Lord in this place. Everybody watching, listening online, I want you to pray with me. It's time to touch heaven's throne. It's time to reach out to him. If you need special prayer in this place, let us know. We're going to pray. For more information about redemption, look us up online at redemption-church.com. We want to hear from you, so be sure to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, or even our anonymous question text line at 
856-0550. Thank you for joining us and have a blessed day.